Everyone in Ghana knows his name. The rest of the world know about him, but few know his face. I'm talking about Ghanaian investigative journalist Anas Aremeyao Anas. He's driven by one motor, naming, blaming, and shaming. Now, his net has caught and exposed the big and the small fish involved in various scandals. DW caught up with the man behind the mask, and still we don't know who he is. This secretly filmed footage from a jail in Ghana reveals what goes on behind prison walls. Men share facilities that can hardly be called toilets. Hashish use among the inmates is frequent. One room is stacked with corpses. These images were all filmed by an undercover journalist. His name, Anas Arameyo Anas, is widely known throughout Ghana, but hardly anyone knows what he looks like. Yes, Anas, I've heard of Anas. He's one of the finest journalists we have in this country. He investigates. And he tries to bring out the truth. He will disguise himself. He can come today as a lady, he could come tomorrow as a Muslim, he could come the next day as even a madman. He was called to uh, receive an award, but I know if it was him that he came to collect the award or not, because the person that came was a female. Should he walk in here, I wouldn't know. I will never know him. But I know he's always around. Anas receives us in his office, but we will not show his face because he's made a lot of enemies. My journalism is hinged on three principles, naming, shaming, and jailing. So when I put this evidence together, I go to the court of law and I testify before the courts, and the bad guys are jailed. Anas assumes false identities and uses a hidden camera. This footage is from the port of Tema, Ghana's largest. With this method, he has managed to expose numerous corrupt officials. I do what I do because it rates corruption of the society and make the society a better place. His revelations end up on front pages of major Ghanaian newspapers. Many people have been prosecuted or fired from their jobs as a result. Anas has been honored with numerous awards, but there's a price to be paid for his undercover work. It makes your private life a bit boring because you cannot do what other people do. You can't um, go out and mingle as other people do because of the security implications. My kind of journalism is very risky. It comes with all the traps and threats and everything. But I must say I don't do this work alone. I do it with a team. Yes, I lead it, but there are many names behind that makes the work possible and good. His work has also won recognition beyond Ghana. Meanwhile, Anas has embarked on an international covert mission. There's still much to be done. Want more proof of his penchant for catching corrupt leaders? Just ask the former president of the Ghana Football Association, Kwesi Nyantichi. Now, Nyantichi was filmed receiving from a businessman a bribe of 65,000 US dollars. Just take a look. Now, that's some serious shaming. As a matter of fact, following this revelation, Nyantichi apologized, resigned from his post, and was finally suspended by world's governing soccer body, FIFA, which, by the way, also has a lot of issues it's cleaning up. Anyway, now, though Anas has won praise and awards for his work, the latest one being the Excellence in Journalism Award in India, his tactics have triggered a heated debate as to whether or not it is ethically right to beat someone and film him or her in the act. I personally view his methods as unethical because he sometimes literally forces people into taking bribes. But I, however, believe that while some were caught in the trap, others stood their grounds and refused to be bribed no matter how juicy it seemed. Now, these are the principled people we need in society. 
So this is what you're going to do. Next time you're in such a situation, ask yourself, principles over money or money over principles? Mm. Mm. Big what? man. What? I, I, I disagree. If mean? I am in that situation uh -huh. and I ask myself that question, uh -huh. money anytime. Over principle? Of course. You don't care about principles. Money any time. But why? Why not? I mean, look at, look at all these politicians that we have in Africa. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not saying all of them, but most of them. Uh -huh. They have acquired their wealth through illegal means. Which is wrong. It is wrong, but who, who cares? We They're care. Still there. We care. They're still there. They're still in power. We still vote for them every year. No, we don't vote for them. Of course we do. They win elections. Uh, if you're looking at this guy, uh, the Ghanaian uh, uh, president of football. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the former president. The former president. Who, who was hurt? He took $65,000. I mean, $65,000 for me is a, is a little... Is, it's not so much. He would have taken like $2 million, $3 million, $5 million. Well, I, 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 originally he would have had about $3 million out of the whole deal. Yeah, and then you, you quit your job, you disappear, you live happily ever after. You know, no stress with anyone. I can't believe we're having this discussion, Big Man. <laughs> so you would literally go for money over principles. Ah, Big Man, principles don't go anywhere. Of course they go principles somewhere. Principles, they stay with you until you die. But they go the somewhere. The money, the chance comes only once in a lifetime. You take it, you live it. And if you, I'm telling you, you, you ditch this money, you say, ah, I, I, I'm a principal guy and I'll, I'll not take the money. And then you go home to your wife or your girlfriend. Uh -huh. You know, today I was offered uh, $3 million and, you know, I'm an upright man. I said no. And get the reaction from the lady. Oh, uh, that they will she, kick you I, out. I think she supports me. <laughs> Forget it. Oh. You'll be out. Why? In the cold. I have. Because they think they're not like us. They think like, okay, this money would have been able to secure all of your future for the next... You know, your kids, your kids, kids, I mean, all your entire clan. I really don't will know. We sort it say. out. <laughs> My entire clan will be set. I mean, I'm not kidding. Seriously, this is an issue we shouldn't even be laughing about. No, but I'm serious. Bribery and corruption is killing the society. We should put a stop to it. But who's, who suffered in this case? The football. Football in a country was Ghana. It's a okay, they were beaten by Kenya 1 0. But I don't think that's because okay, of the. Okay, now we're going to Ghana versus Kenya. You know what? Forget this. <laughs> <laughs>